ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد عباد الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار عباد الله قال عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لرجل وهو يعظه اسمعوا يا عباد الله اسمعوا الى هذا الحديث العظيم listen to this hadith والحديث في المستدرك الحاكم وصححه الالباني قال ابن عباس Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to a man while he was giving him advice wa huwa ya'idhu maw'idha qala ikhtanim khamsan qabla khams he said take advantage of five before five ikhtanim it means to utilize to take advantage of to make the most of whatever you have you utilize the time you utilize the resource you take the most you use it to the best of your ability and as a muslim is nowadays a lot of us i would not say all of us but a lot of us نغتنم امور الدنيا وكم when comes to the worldly thing we utilize them we take advantage of them we make sure we we get the most of everything that we see in this dunya but the people of righteousness people of salah and taqwa they're completely on the other side of the coin when it comes to dunya they go by the bylaw they go by the life style of the righteous when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wala tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya do not forget your share of this dunya so we are not in the business of sitting in the masajid wearing a turban or wearing a short thobe and having a long miswak not going out for to seek a rizq we sit in the masjid and we say allah provides that is not the people of ahl taqwa and righteousness but also you should not be like the people of dunya every golden opportunity every golden opportunity they take advantage of it they known as gold diggers when it comes to dunya he's savvy 
He knows what he wants. He knows he should be friend. He knows who should be nice to. He knows who to deal with. He knows who to talk to. He knows who to communicate with. But because of umur dunya But when it comes to akhirah, he sees miskin in front of the masjid. He walks by that person. He sees the opportunity in the first row. He does not take advantage of that. Look at Musa alayhi salam. Musa had an opportunity with Allah. First time that he met Allah, first time that Allah spoke to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so delighted, he was so happy that he's having conversation with Allah. And he wanted to take opportunity and utilize that moment that he has with Allah. And Allah asked him a question. Qala, wa ma tilka bi ya Musa. What is this thing that you have on your hand, your right hand? Was sufficient for Musa to say, it is my stick. But look how Musa alayhi salam utilized that moment with Allah and he belonged to the best of his ability. Qala hiya asaya, atawakka'u alayya. Who asked you all this question? Musa was not asked all this question. The reason that Musa alayhi salam gave all these multiple answers because he wanted to continue having conversation with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Utilizing the opportunity. Utilizing the moment that he had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, اِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ What did he say? Did he say yes? But he said no. He didn't say no, but he said, I will, but this. شَرْحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقُدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانٍ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي All of those, just to utilize the opportunity. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ask Musa and his nation to come to Jabal al-Tur. And Musa left his people because 70,000 of them, children, women, elderly, people that cannot run and walk as fast as him, he left them with Musa. And Allah said, وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى Why did you leave your people behind? قَالُهُمْ أُولَيْ عَلَىٰ وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْ I rushed, O oh Allah, to please you. I want to be here before anyone else. I want to come to you before anyone else. And this is the attitude of a Muslim, not a person who is a blood sucker, not a person who is a dunya safi, not a person who utilizes opportunity with people and things. You know, as a Muslim, as a righteous person, you should be a savvy when it comes to Akhir. So the messenger of Allah said, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس Utilize five things before five things. Take advantage of five things while you have them and before you lose them. قال الشبابك Your youth, your youthfulness, your nashat, your activeness, your, 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 your blood, fresh blood, the energy that you have. The moments that you have in this life is very short. And short of that and part of that is a part that you live as a young man and, a, and as a young lady. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, take advantage of that before you become old. Take advantage of that. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, قَالَ لَا تَزُولْ قَدَمَا عَبْدِ The feet or the servant of Allah on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah will not move. He cannot go forward. He cannot go to Jannah or Jahannam. He cannot go backward. He cannot, be, he cannot do anything unless he's asked five and one of them. وَفِي شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَهِ What have you done with your young age? How did you utilize it? What did you do with it? 
Look at the time, look at the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read the biography of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Read the biography of Abdullah ibn Umar. Read the biography of Abdullah ibn Umar, whom the Messenger of Allah came to him as a young man, as a boy, and he grabbed his shoulders and he said, Ibn Umar, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharib aw abir is sabil. He said, Be in this dunya as a stranger or a wafer, a person just passing by. And then Abdullah ibn Umar lived by that hadith. And he used to say to the people, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتْ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاعَ He's a young man. Take time. Take advantage of your age. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the reward of young people who will utilize their time for the sake of Allah. في صحيح البخاري ومسلم And he says سَبْعَة Seven that Allah will shade them on the will shade them under his shade on the day where there's no shade but his. And one of them was Shab, a young man. A young man who was raised in the obedience of Allah. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, utilize your young age before you get old. And subhanAllah, when I look back in my own life, my personal life, I, can, I always say to myself, I wish, I wish if I utilized my time better. I wish, I wish if it had more of, if I, if I can only rewind back time. I wish if I, if I could utilize the time that I missed it. Learn more ilm, learn more skills, do more ibadat. And that was just yesterday. Now imagine when you're old enough that you can't stand up for qiyam al -Layl. When you're too old to fast Mondays and Thursdays. When you're too old to sit there and read the Quran from Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Tantil, Salat al duha When you're too old to listen to a lecture without getting up twice or three times. You are too old to do a tawaf around the haram. You are too old to seek ilm. You, those days you will wish if your shabab is restored. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, Take advantage of your young age before you become old. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and take advantage of your health before you become ill and sick. How many of you, how many of you, my dear brothers and sisters, went to the hospitals and saw ill people? How many of you Seeing someone that someone else has to clean him up, has to uncover his aura and clean him up. How many of you know someone that he can't get up and make wudu for himself? How many of us that witness someone that cannot even read or sit up and pray salah? Can't read the salah sitting up, letting alone standing up. And the Messenger of Allah is saying, Take advantage of your health. Take advantage of your health. See, human beings are arrogant, very arrogant. You know, when you're healthy, you think you're unstoppable. You think, you know, you have so many opportunities. You think you have so many chances. Do Imrah, I'll do it later. Do Hajj, I'm still young. Learn this deen, I still have chance. You know, come and pray Qiyam al layl Insha'Allah, I have to work tomorrow, but I'll do it Insha'Allah during the weekend. And then you get sick. 
you get sick and you can't even do anything for yourself. And you know what, Ya Ibadullah? When you sick, when you get sick, Allah will reward you based on what you used to do when you were healthy. So if you are a man of Quran, a person who fasts certain days of the week, a person of ibadah, person who visits the sick people, person who walks to the masjid, and you earn hasanat left and right, guess when you get sick, Allah will reward you as you used to do. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu, he weaved while he was sick. And the people said, Ibn Mas'ud, are you crying because Allah is testing you with illness? He said, no. فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ الْمَرَضُ كَفَّارَةِ He said, I heard the messenger of Allah. I'm not crying because I'm sick. Because I have heard the messenger of Allah saying, indeed illness is nothing but expiation for the Muslim. When you're sick, Allah washes you away from your sins. He said, but I'm sad. That I got sick في حالة فطور. He said, I get, I'm sad because I got sick when I was as, not as active as it should be in ibadah. I'm not in jihad because I, I, if I were in jihad, then I would have been rewarded as a person who is in that state. I'm not doing extra ibadah when I got sick because if I did, if I were in that situation, I would have been earning hasanat while I'm still sick. لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم used to encourage the Sahaba and he used to say if you are performing Hajj make it fast do it as soon as possible don't delay it because you could get sick you may lose something a Hajj may come to you and you won't be able to perform so now you have the opportunity to go and I know so many Muslims can travel from the city, from the city of Nairobi, and perform Umrah every month. But they're not doing it. But when, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. But the day that the person is sick, he wish if you could do that. I have seen a man who's 76 years old. 76 years old. And he made 56 hajj. And he comes to Umrah almost every month. And when he got old, I have seen his sons pushing him around the tawaf because he couldn't walk. Now that, as a person, that is someone we should try to imitate. لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم talked about في صحيح البخاري قال نعمتان two blessings that a lot of people are fooled by مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس a lot of people are fooled by الصحة والفراغ I won't come to that أقول ما تسمعون استغفر الله لك فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem, Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Nashad annahu ballagha al-risalah, wa adda al-amanah, wa nasaha al-umma. Ibad Allah, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the third nasiha that he gave to that man, الذي كان يعظه, قال, take advantage of your wealth become before you become poor. 
Take advantage of your wealth. Take advantage of your resources, your money, before you become poor. Don't think, don't you ever assume and think you pass the mark and you will never go broke. Don't ever assume that you made enough money and you can sustain yourself. Don't you ever miscalculate and say, Alhamdulillah, this is enough for me until I die because Allah, the one who gave it to you, can take it away from you. So the Messenger of Allah is saying to us, use your money before you become poor. He did not say use your money and go to Jamaica. Use your money and go to New York City and have fun and enjoy yourself. He did not mean go and waste your money. Use it. No. He means utilize it. Utilize it. See, some of us, some of us as Muslims, we have to struggle to earn and buy Jannah with A'mal. Some of us, because we don't have much money, we have to read extra Quran. We have to perform extra Salah. We have to do extra fasting because we're all racing to paradise. And some of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not, may not give, Allah maybe did not give them that ability, but He gave them other resources to purchase their Jannah. Yet, some of us don't understand the formula of Allah. And they speak the language of Qarun. I earned this money because I'm smart. I earned this money because I'm clever. I earned this money because of my connections. I have someone that I know in this place and that place. And that place. I know a businessman that I utilize resources. And they think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not facilitate for them. But they were too intelligent for others. For, therefore they made money. Exact the same statement of Qarun, but in different formula. The Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Fuqara, they came to the Messenger of Allah and they said, Ya Rasulullah, the people of wealth, they took all the rewards. They pray as we pray. They fast as we fast. They perform jihad as we do. But because they have access to resources, they give sadaqah. They give sadaqah that we can't give. So they're going to be ahead of us in Jannah. Because they do everything that we do. Salah, we pray, they pray. Fast, we fast, they fast. Umrah, we perform, they perform. On the top of that, they spend. Messenger of Allah, Rahim. He said, shall I not teach you something? And he taught them the dua that we all know. And then the Ahl al-Khayr, the people of wealth, whom Salihin, like Abdul Rahman bin Awf, Sa'ad bin al-Rabi'ah, and the rest of the Ansar and the Muhajireen, who had some money when they heard the dua, they also applied. So the Fuqara came back, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, what can we do? Now they're competing with us, even with Al-Adkar. This is the blessings of Allah. What can I do with that? Allah blessed him with the ability. Imagine, Ya Abdullah. Imagine if you like everyone else. You pray, you fast, you, you, know, you, you, you do a Qiyam al layl you read the Quran, you do your adhkar, subhanAllah, you do all this. And then Allah puts you money on the top of that. Can, why wouldn't you just purchase Jannah? Jannah is at your reach, subhanAllah. You can easily purchase. Yaqul al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, utilize your wealth. Utilize it. Before you become poor. Utilize that. And then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
I conclude to the fifth. And he said, utilize your life before your death. Yes. Your life before your death. How many of you know someone who died? How many of you know someone who's underneath us? How many of you know those people that we love who wish to come back today and be with us? Wallahi ya ibadallah. Wallahi, if you go to the graves today, if you go to the graves and you ask them, if you go to the wealthiest man ever lived and you ask them, if Allah gives you another opportunity, what would have you done with it? Wallahi, he, that person would say, I would never run after dunya. I would have spent my time worshipping Allah and being righteous. I have seen the most profound picture in my life. And this was the picture of King Abdullah. May Allah have mercy on all the Muslims. On his grave was this Sudani brother. On his grave, Sudani brother, raising his hand, making dua for King Abdullah. Where is his wealth? Where are the bodyguards and security? What happened to the status that he had? What happened to all of that? Nothing matters. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to you and I, take advantage of your life before you die. Take advantage. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sees the Sahaba gather in one place and he run towards them and he came to them, Radhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were surrounded, they were surrounding a grave. And the Messenger of Allah penetrated the crowd and he saw the grave, and his legs could not carry him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he went down on his knees and he looked down and his beard was touching his chin, chin his, his beard was touching his chest. And the tears were coming. And he said to the Sahaba, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا For such a place, work for it. For such a place, work for it. Because no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how fresh you look today, no matter how healthy you look, no matter how good you are, when you die, you will be buried there. And no wealth, no status, no friends, no family, no one will stay with you. No one. Wallahi, no one, Ya Abdullah. And it would be you, your amal, and Allah. What would you say? And you, how would you approach when you are there in that little place all by yourself? Your beautiful wife is not there. Your beautiful children who used to keep the house full, you know, if they late, you call them. You know, if they're sick, you rush them to the hospital. Your relatives. None of them would be with you. It would be only your deeds. No one else. And subhanAllah, woe to us 
if the rafiq that we have there is our bad deeds woe to us if the one that is going to stay there is the lies that you lie the riba that you consume you know when people want to punish people when they want to punish people when the government states wants to punish people prisoners they put them in a cell solitary cell and no one is allowed to be in touch with them and people they go insane even though they can breathe they can drink they can eat they can sleep but imagine if what you have there is nothing but your evil actions imagine the zina that you committed the lies that you lied, the money that you cheated, the nifaq, that the faces that you had, multiple faces, multiple faces that you had. Imagine the abuse that you performed, the hukuk that you took from innocent people, the zulm that you committed. Imagine is all that is in your account. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they will be there unless you repent to Allah. Imagine, come out of the hadith, Ibadat ibn Samit, Fil Hakim, Musahaw al Albani. Imagine if the window you're betting is from hell. Now you sleep on a comfortable bed. The bed sheet must be, has to be washed periodically. <laughs> have to be soft. They can't be hushing, rough. The room has to smell nice. The pillows have to be fluffy and soft. Imagine if your bed with Iyad Billah is from Jahannam. Imagine if your bed sheets are from Jahannam. Imagine you're no longer in that nice, wide, spacious room that you call bedroom, no longer there. Rather, the edge of the grave is crushing your chest. Imagine that. Don't lose sight of that. And don't be fooled by the destruction and the glamorous and the false hope that you can do something tomorrow. You can do khair tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. You don't have yesterday. You have today. You have now. You don't even have the moment that we leave this message. You don't even know if you're going to finish this salah. How do you even know I'm going to finish this khutbah? I don't have that. You don't have that. So utilize your life before your death. Take advantage of Abdullah. Don't worry what the people may say or think. Don't worry what people are gaining from this dunya. Don't be abd of dirham and dinar. Don't be abd of a house and a car and a vehicle and a beautiful wife. Be abdullah. And make sure you fill, you fill your grave with hasanat. Make sure that when we leave you because, I, wallahi, we will leave you. When we leave you there, make sure the door or the window from Jannah would be open for you. Make sure that you put enough, enough in your account that the malaika will come and will say to you, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Make sure the malaika will come to you and they will say, This is your place in Jannah, glad tidings. Make sure you leave that there. Make sure you utilize the opportunity. Ightanim means utilize. Everyone who is standing and sitting here right now, you have a chance to be from the people of Jannah. 
You have that opportunity. I have that chance. But when, when Malak al Maut separates my soul from my body, I don't have that chance. So, اغتنم يا عبد الله يا أمت الله and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the past. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make every opportunity that you have, opportunity that you utilize to the best of your ability. Ibad Allah, I'll conclude exactly how I started. Don't be a person who takes advantage of this dunya only, but take advantage of akhirah. Take advantage of this dunya for akhirah. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ارحمنا فأنت بنا راحم وأقم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله يرحمكم الله <تصفيق>